Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> Hope so. All right, okay, well, so before we open up the actual kit, I want you to know that this one meeting isn't the only chance for you to learn about this kit. We have plenty of resources. We have brochures and guides to help you remember the steps, and we've posted videos online just in case you feel like you need a refresher course. I think that would be very helpful. Okay, great. Now, Alice, I'm told that you have some experience with hypodermic needles. Yeah, that's right. I have to give myself insulin every day. Okay, perfect. Well, then this won't be anything too challenging if you're used to needles. But we do like to just spend a few minutes making sure our patients know what they'll find when they open this kit for the first time. I mean, if you ever actually need the kit, you're not going to have a lot of time on your hands. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, here we have our sample kit to play with. And it's got demo in giant letters right here <laughs> to make sure we know that there's no actual medication in the kit. So it's safe to use for times just like this. Okay, so rule number one, don't go anywhere without this kit. If you're driving, have it in the car with you. If you're home, take it inside with you. And if you go on vacation, it goes with you. Vacation? Ha <laughs> ha, we never go anywhere. That's not true. Yes, it is. Wherever you go, just make sure that you have the kit with you. It even has this attractive carrying case suitable for casual or formal occasions. The real one doesn't say demonstration kit, I'm guessing. Right, yeah, the real one does not say demonstration kit on it. One thing you need to remember, be sure not to store the kit for prolonged periods in heat or direct sunlight or extreme cold. You want to try to keep it at room temperature, otherwise the drug doesn't work as well. But the most important thing is to take it with you always. You never know when you're going to need it. Now, you've both already gone over the signs of overdose with Dr. Watkins, right? Yep. Um... Deep sleep and shaking and shouting you don't wake from. Uh, gurgling or choking sounds mixed with snoring. Good. Uh, no or slow breathing. Uh, bluish or grayish lips and fingernails and pale and clammy skin. Wow, that's exactly right. I'm, I'm going to let you guys teach my next training class. <laughs> okay, so if you see those symptoms, the first thing you'll do is open up this kit and administer the naloxone. Then you'll call 911 and tell them what's going on. Now, we want the contents of this kit to be completely familiar to you. So let's go through it together right now, all right? Great. Okay. So let me get all of this out. I know it's going to seem like a lot, but it will make sense in a second here. All right, put these all out. I want them to be neat. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and start with the naloxone vials. Normally, they'd be sealed and capped, and this is what the real one looks like, all right? We also have two packaged hypodermic needles, two alcohol swabs, rubber gloves, a face shield, and two brochures. All right, so Alice, you've dealt with needles before, so why don't you open up the brochure and look at the instructions on how to give the naloxone. And then we can try it out with these sample vials. First of all, you're going to uncap one of the vials. This one's already uncapped, so just pretend. All right. And then I'm going to give you that needle, open the package, and take it out. Good. Now, uncap the needle. All right, now hold the vial upside down and push the needle through the rubber plug into the liquid. Yeah, you got it. Now, draw down one milliliter. Okay. You got it? All right, yeah. withdraw the needle, and then you know the rest. Tap it and clear any air bubbles. Perfect. Great. Where's the best injection site? You want a large muscle, ideally the upper arm or upper thigh or the outer side of either buttock. Um, I want the arm. Okay. I'm saving your life. You don't get a vote. And the needle should be 90 degrees from the skin. So let me see you inject this oh. orange. Let's practice on the orange. You're going to go in 90 degrees. Let's see. Very nice. Hey. That's it? Well, not quite. Remember to call 911 and tell them what's going on. Now, if the person doesn't respond to the first shot within two or three minutes, or if they seem to get better, but then go back into overdose, like if breathing resumes, but then stops again, you need to give them another dose using the second vial and needle. Do I choose a different site? I would, yeah. So after you've used the naloxone, it's important to make sure you dispose of it in a safe way to reduce risk of transmitting viruses through accidental needle sticks. Mm. So now, do you remember how to dispose of needles properly? I put my needles in a sharps container. Yeah, great. And if for some reason 
um, you don't have access to your sharps container, you should follow your community's hazardous waste collection instructions. Or you can give it to an ambulance crew member. Also, it's important that if you do end up using your kit, that you let your provider know and request a new kit. Because your provider will want to make sure that you're okay and evaluate whether changes to your treatment might be needed to keep you safe. Any questions? No, makes sense. I hope we don't have to cross that bridge. Oh, that's for sure. Well, and we hope so too. And that's why the education Dr. Watkins gave you on how to prevent an overdose is so important. I mean, hopefully you won't need to use the kit. But if an emergency did happen, you're now both fully trained emergency naloxone administrators. <laughs> Thank you. If we ever need to use this stuff, I'm going to be mighty ticked off at you. But you'll save me anyway, right? Well, let's talk about that vacation we're going to take. Uh, well, while you talk, let's get rid of this needle um, and put it in a sharps container. <laughs>